Hey guys, Andrew Chen here again. So today we'll be building a uh, React uh, with uh, MongoDB and ExpressJS app. <clears throat> and that, the four combination of those are often called Merm. And you know, um, it is it is sometimes the go-to way in web development today. Uh, yeah, again, MongoDB for database, Express and Node for our back end and the React will be taking care of the front end. And keep in mind, React is actually only supposed to take in the front end. Um, yeah. So this is what our project will look like at the end. You know, you can uh, log in, log out, do whatever. Um, and when you register a new user, it's going to be saved to the database. So, you know, I, I really just want to provide you guys the most value. So to be honest, sincerely, you guys should definitely check out this article right here. I think it explains even better than me, you know, because the text is there. And um, the only reason you should be watching my videos is if, number one, you are a, uh, uh, a person that likes to, you know, you kind of like this audio and visual person. And second of all, if you uh, kind of need a more detailed explanation or else just go with this article, it has all the code inside. And uh, I'll, be, uh, I'll be basically reading this article and implementing it while um, telling you guys what it does. Okay. So let's let's make a new app first of all. Let's make a new app. Uh, I'm gonna go to my terminal. I usually keep my React projects in this folder called Great React Projects, and then I'm gonna make a new folder. So mkdir make directory. Uh, let's call it Mern Authentication. Let's call it Mern Auth, and then let's do npm init. And uh, enter, enter. Oh wait, what does it say? Can only be URL friendly characters. Control C real quick. Oh, I forgot a CD into uh, Mern off. So I go into Mern off and then uh, npm init. Initialize the npm package JSON package. Enter, enter, enter. We will later change this entry point from index.js to server because. Um, uh, server is more uh, makes more sense. Okay, so now it's initialized. Let's open this up. So let's go to Great React Projects, and then I'm gonna open it up with my editor, and I called it. I I mean I use uh, Adam for my editor. I'll personally suggest Sublime Text, even though I use Adam because Adam freezes sometimes. Um, it's not open yet. Give me a second. Now it is. All right. So, <clears throat> so what we want to do is, um, what we want to do first of all is like what we always do, is to download some packages. Now here are the packages that we'll be downloading. In the meantime, that these packages will be downloading, I'll be uh, explaining the the project layout a little bit more. So just literally type these in. Uh, um, I think I will explain in a second. Passport JWT validator. Yep. And here's going to be our project layout. So I'm going to zoom in my webcam real quick. Um, hello. Let's move this up a little bit. Okay. Oh, actually, I already did it once, but let me erase this and explain to you guys. So first of all, if you don't know what are the difference between front end and back end, front end is basically where you just play to the user, and back end is the logic that happens, uh, and usually the stuff that you, uh, the logic that happens behind. But it's not just any logic; it's more logic that happens um, between the 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 database and this thing called the server. So the server is also included in the back end. So and in our case, Node.js and Express.js is what I'm going to be using for the server. Um, here, here's what happens. In the front end, let's say you have something like a form. And then you, you, you programmed it and you put it in JavaScript so that when you click, when you submit the form, it's going to make a request like slash, um, the request is going to be, let's say, uh, localhost 5000 dash API uh, dash user dash register right so let's say when you register a user you coded the path of that um, I mean when you press that you said that you're going to send a request like this and the request is going to be post so in HTTP there's going to be like 
8 or 9 or 10, actually like 20 types of request, one of them is post. Um, that means you're sending something and getting something, uh, potentially getting something back, but you're sending something, sending some data to this uh, address. Right, so we're sending some data to this address. Um, and what actually happens when you send this is that we go to our backend. And this is going to be the server, which is basically the backend. I mean, one part of the backend. Um, the server, we're going to set it, we're going to code it so that the server is continuously listening to the port 5000. It's going to listen. So listen to uh, that right there. And when you send a request like that, it's going to say, oh, okay, I'm listening and I found it. So now let's route to this part right here. Uh, so then we're going to have a path right here that's maybe, uh, it, it's just going to be called API slash users uh, slash register. Um, we're going to go there and we're going to find a method of uh, what happens when we do call register. And then this register is, is probably going to save, uh, save the data that you send from here, the form. And then we're going to go all go all the way here. We still have we still maintain the data. So this is data, and we still maintain the data. And we're going to make a new database model with this data. And then we're going to so this is the database. So let's say if you sent along in the form email, password, and name, then uh, the right here at register you validated it. It works. It, it is savable. Then we're going to save it to the database. Uh, and we're going to pre-build an object in the database. It's called user. Uh, and it's going to have the have the fields like name, database, uh, name, email, and password. It's going to work work when we save it. Uh, so then after we register, um, after this is called, this sends, uh, saves the, goes to the server again, and it goes to the database. So we save. A lot of routes here is going to be done server. That's what we're going to spend our majority of the time focusing on. Um, so now, let's get back to it. I'm going to zoom out. Uh, let me zoom, uh, zoom in again. So fortunately, my package just has been done. Um, a short description. I think you should look more into the, uh, the article for this. I'm going to link into the YouTube des description. But right now, just note that so the important ones, I believe, is concurrently which allows you to run your front run your front end and back end at the same time express which is going to be our router and um mongoose which is um just a just, just a package from mongo database that is going to make it easier to write a lot of code okay now let's get to it also we want to do npm install d node mong which stands for dependency um, node mod is a utility that will, whenever it senses a change in your code, it's going to restart your server. Instead of uh, you having to manually press an intro, control C every time you make a change. Um, it's a little bit annoying when you do that. And, yeah. So first of all, let's just set up our MongoDB while this is running. This is taking some time now. Um, I have I had it set up initially, but I'm going to log out to, and then make a new database so then everybody can follow along. We'll be eventually connecting our server to the database and I'll show you guys how in a second but um, what just happened? Create new. S select sandbox to start off. Uh, Virginia. Mirth, um Authentication. Let's call it that. So at first you have 500 megabytes for free. Awesome work by MLAB, man. You can save a lot of stuff with that. Um, not images though, so make sure you don't save too many images. So I believe it's this one that we're looking at. We will later use this thing right here, the MongoDB URI, to connect the database and the server. But right now we just have this. And let's make a user here. Let's call it test. Let's call it admin. And let's the database password, whatever you want to name. I'm going to do admin123. Create. Okay, now we created a user. Um, okay. So we will later be using. Um, oh God. That is, by the way, set it up uh, by all of the npm init thing. We set it node.js. We're gonna make a new directory called config, and then inside we're gonna put a file called keys.js, and then we're gonna put this right here. The Mongo URI. Oh God. 
your i equals to whatever key displays is here because we'll later uh, we will later just call on this file called keys to get the mongo uri and then to do the server uh, whatever replace db user with whatever you had so in my case i think it was admin i think it was admin and then admin one two three so admin i think it's a lowercase i believe so okay uh, so now, according to the article, let's set up our server with node.js and React. I mean, not React Express. Sorry, those are two very different things. By the way, since we created a new um, thing called server.js, let's go to package.json real quick. And instead of do using index.js here, let's do server.js. Okay, now it's all good. I'm gonna, first of all, we're gonna import some packages. Uh, the express, uh, I mean, the require. Syntax is basically express, but uh, I said that wrong. The require syntax is basically like import, but it is like a Node.js way of saying import. Mongoose allows us to use a lot of um, MongoDB functions a lot easier. And the body parser, I uh, seriously, to be honest, I still haven't understood it, but it's just like a middleware, and that is like the last thing I, I really want to care about. So let's instantiate some a variable called um, app equals to express. And I'm going to let this express thing use the middleware body parser. Dot URL encoded, uh, extended, equals to false. Uh, and when I press Control Alt F, this automatically uh, formats the code. If you don't have that, make sure you go to File, uh, Settings, go to Install in, in the Packages place. Search up Prettyfy. Pretty five, pretty five. Um, this thing right here, and then just install it. Depending if you have Atom or not, it's going to show up like one. But for other uh, text editors, I believe just definitely uh, made by one made for it. Uh, so here is what we here is DB configuration. I'm going to make a cost called DB equals to require, and again, require is kind of like importing. So basically importing, so this let's call it db keys. And we're basically this thing right here represents this thing right here. Right? And then to connect, to actually do the connection, we're gonna use mongoose. And we're gonna do this thing right here. We're gonna insert the db keys and then say use new URL parser equals to true. And then uh, this is this returns a promise-based syntax, which means we can use then and stuff like catch with it. So basically, it's going to say it, it, it makes really good sense. Then after this happens, then what we do? So then we're going to do console.log uh, everything working Mongo. I mean, not everything yet, maybe. So let's just do Mongo DB connected successfully. Successfully. Um, I think somewhere my syntax went off. Let me see what happened. When you use prettier and your control F doesn't work, a control alt F doesn't work, something is going wrong. Um, I don't know. This is interesting. Let me delete this. Because something here went wrong. Okay. Dot connect DB keys, use new. I don't know. Let me try here. Oh, something here is not right. It's probably this thing right here. Uh, um, I needed an extra this. I don't know where that comes from. Oh, it's still not working. What the? Let me delete this whole thing. Uh, give me a second, guys. App I use body parser dot URL encoded uh, extended equals to false that whatever. Um, forgot to use this right here, even though it probably doesn't matter. It does matter, but for the pretty five thing, it doesn't matter. Require.mongo.uri connect. So is it this part that doesn't matter? Okay, that works now. And then we can also catch errors like this. If there's an error, do console log error. Alright. Uh, here's actually, remember earlier I talked about the server is constantly listening to, listening to the 
um, listening to the um, where is it the port the port bottom of the ports. It's okay. There's constant listening to that. Bit. Okay, that's basically the port five thousand. Uh, here's how we actually set that up. Just do app to listen. So Express will basically be in charge of doing the listening since app is basically uh, uh, Express right there. Uh, so server is up and running on 5000. All right. Um, so now we can do something. Uh, now we have also uh, downloaded the node mod correctly. We can actually just do node mod run server. So it says uh, it is running on the server correctly. Um, now let's actually. So what what have we set up now is that uh, we have set up a server. This is listening to this, but we haven't set up any like routes here, and we never set up any. What will happen when we have register or or the or the login thing, and then we also haven't made a database uh, collection yet. So collection is kind of like an object. So let's make a database collection first, so that we know what we want to target in our register and in, uh, and our login files. Mm, let's make a new, actually directory. Uh, models. And inside of models, let's make a new thing called user.js. And here's how we're gonna make a model in the database. Basically, it's gonna, of course, obviously, obviously, it's gonna use mongoose. But the important thing is here that we need to use uh, schema. Schema is kind of like object. And this is, and the following thing I'm gonna type is what we're gonna have in our object. Equals a new schema. We're gonna give the user schema a field called name. Type is probably gonna be string. That makes sense intuitively. The required is gonna be true. So what happens if you don't type in required? Well, it's gonna throw an error, of course. Um, but we're gonna do a lot of pre-checking to make sure that that error does not happen. Um, because errors in the database place is probably gonna be a little bit more problematic versus the, just the back end. I mean, that's actually debatable, but I personally think so. The default equals to date dot now. A pretty default way of doing this. And then when we actually import this file, we want to, this, to export this. We can just call it export user. And it's really uh, that thing right there. Um, user schema. So now we set up a new... Uh, now we set up this part, the user that we want to save. But we have to set up this whole part, right? Uh, first of all, we need to set up um, a form where we can put in the value that can be replaced by, for now, uh, this thing called Postman. You can just send static data without you know all the fancy UI. Um, yeah, Postman, I, go, I want to show you guys real quick what is Postman. Uh, come here. Now let me open up Postman. In Postman, you can actually make HTTP requests, and yeah, that's really powerful for us. But we haven't done anything like the, we haven't made an endpoint yet. So the endpoint will actually, so when it, when it listens to port five thousand, it's going to, it's going to accept all of the requests that comes in that is has five thousand, right? But um, whatever it is after five thousand, we gotta make endpoints for that. So for example, if if the request coming in has an endpoint to register, then we're gonna redirect them to our server to a function. Uh, in a server car or register and it's going to and it's going to say oh well we receive that when the router receives that when the express router receives that what do we do well so if it comes in like let's say um, high five right if it comes in like high five but we don't have that endpoint it's not going to do anything so in this case we want to define two endpoints a register and a login because that is what we want to do with the user and to make an HTTP request to that we just do um, slash register or slash login at the end. Yeah, you can just make a request here, but let's jump to the. Um, but here's what we want to do. First of all, we want to make validation functions. Uh, for we want to make validation functions for the re register and um, login, because when the user input the data, well, when we test it with Postman. We don't want the data to send to the to this 
to this uh to this endpoint and be able to save the database and then realizing that there's something missing and then we throw an error back. We we want to actually just throw it to this endpoint here after receiving a request at that endpoint and then do some validation check there and then if there's error throw it back, right? It's just a lot of time saved. So let's do that. So here's how we're gonna make the validation functions. We're gonna make a new folder first of all. And let's call it validator. And now let's actually name it well, according to the document, which I am basically replicating, I am going to call it validation. Yeah, validation. And inside of validation, let's make a basically a register validation.js file. Let's also make a login verification file. And inside of register, this is what we're going to do. We're going to first of all import two packages that we downloaded at the beginning with npm. One is called a validator, one is called is empty. And both of these have similar functions. Validator basically has uh, built-in functions to check whatever you put in is uh, is uh, something that you want. For example, just functions like is email, is it a password, stuff like that. So when we import this whole file register.js, we're actually going to be exporting this register inputs data. And we're going to have an errors tab, and we're going to see why in a second, because we can then return the errors. Um, the edit on name goes to the is empty. I'm going to type all of these right here really quick, and I'll explain to you guys in a second. Uh, type password wrong twice, dude. Um, and we're also going to have a password two. So what are we doing here? We're basically checking. Um, we're basically if we if we see that the data, so whatever we we put in here, right? So in our example, would be the form that we're going to put in. It's going to be our data that's coming in probably, and and the data should have a name field. It should have an email field and I should pa I should have a password field and it should have a password to field and if those are empty if those are not empty we just set it to whatever it came in as but if those are empty we set it as an empty string and then later here we can say that if uh, those strings were empty so for example data.name then we can just do the following errors dot name equals to name field is required so we're instantiating a property here called uh, errors. It's going to call a name field is uh, required. And there's going to be email checks. So first of all, we're going to check if the user even put in the email or not. This is how we do it. Uh, just akin, akin to the name one. And it's going to be errors.email equals to email field is required. Uh, but else if we're going to have this built-in validator method called is email data email. So you can imagine that is email is probably going to check if you ended with a dot com, if you ended with a, if you have an at symbol in your uh, email, um, then uh, email entered is invalid, right? Or just email is invalid. Control Alt F to use Prettyfy plugin to prettyfy my code. And here are the password checks. Um, first of all, we want to check if we even enter the password or not, and this is how we do it. Right, and then uh, we're going to use some more uh, validator built-in methods, such as this one. We can check the length of the password. And the only way for this error to trigger this one is that if it's only you entered less than six figures, 
Um, And this is going to check um, if the two passwords entered are equal to each other. And if they're not, we should probably... So this the, the password 2 is the thing that you always have. It's like the check. Um, insert the password the same as the one earlier. Yeah, so anyways. And at the end, this function is going to return uh, errors. And interestingly, this is the one that's pretty interesting. It's empty errors. So if the errors tab is indeed just a blank one right here, then it's going to return a boolean and is valid is going to be true. And if not, it's going to be false. And we can use is valid to determine if we want to save the uh, these fields to the database. So let's save that. And for login, it's going to be the, pretty much the same thing. You would imagine it's going to be more, but it's actually less. So you would imagine that, you know, uh, Potentially, you imagine that. I don't want to be too uh, assuming here. Potentially, you would imagine that login requires a lot more because you want to check if the email and uh, uh, password matches. But keep in mind that all of those information are stored in our database. So we can't really have access to it until... So we can only check the basics, right? And then we can later uh, go into our database to see if the email inserted and the password inserted uh, are the same. So this is actually going to be a lot less code because um, we are not dealing with the database and we're not dealing with whether or not the, the email and the password matches. So since we're inserting less fields because we only need the email and the password, uh, it's going to be a lot less work. Oh, by the way, I don't think I explained the shorthand here. This is basically saying that uh, this is basically if if then loop. It's saying that it's going to test this boolean, this condition. If this is true, then we execute this. If not, we execute that. Yeah. And here's the email check. Uh, this is very akin to the one that we just did. I don't care if I spelled uh, required incorrectly. Else, if validator dot is email data dot email. I'm probably going to get a lot of uh, naming errors in the server later. Right, that's the email check, and we also want the password check. We're really only able to check for whether or not the password is um, is a password entered or if it's empty or not. Right? We can't really check for anything else. Should also be a no, it's okay. And then we return the errors part. I was gonna say this should all, all also be a checking whether or not it's at least six uh six things, but then it's gonna be wrong anyways. Um yeah, it's doesn't really matter. I don't know why I did that. It's gonna return errors and whether or not it is valid or not. And is valid is gonna be determined on whether or not we have errors. So now we're done with the validation, and now we can use this validation in uh, in uh, when we're setting up our API routes. So now we go to the sixth, uh, the seventh part of our article, and it's called called setting up our API routes. That is basically saying that's making the endpoints right, and uh, I think it's going to make a lot more sense when I start doing it instead of now. Uh, make a new folder called uh, let's see, let's call it routes and inside of routes let's make it API uh, make a directory for API and then inside of API let's make a new file called users.js um, I'm gonna import everything first Crypt.js. JWT is going to help us in our authentication. It's not required, so of course, good. We're going to let me see what happened here. 
we're going to import these functions that we used earlier. I mean that we uh, made earlier. Uh, equals to require. This one should be called login input. Uh, login inputs, I guess. Yep, that works. So also we want to load the uh, user that we created earlier, the schema, because uh, in the endpoint we will be receiving the data uh, that is sent via the to the address, right? Um, and then we can also retrieve the information that's uh, again we can we can retrieve the information that the user sent. And then if we validate it and it's all correct, then we're going to save it. We're going to instantiate new, we're going to make the new, uh, I mean, the required uh, fields, and then we're going to save it to the database. Yeah, we're going to make a new user, blank user, and then we're going to instantiate the fields, and we're going to save it to the database. Um, so let's make the, um, why don't we make the register endpoint first, and then we can test with that. This is what we're going to do. This might not make sense at the moment, I believe, but it should when I start exploring. Um, so this is saying that. Uh, let me. Uh, well, let's actually get this done first. So don't don't worry about this for the moment. I'll explain what to this. Let's do the form validation first. Right, whether or not the user input is correct. Now, when you set send an HTTP request. To an endpoint, uh, you usually send it like um, there's going to be a request, right? The whole object you send is going to be a request, and you often store the information in a body. So then we can just retrieve whatever the user sent uh, in in uh, this. Um, let's see, with uh, request body, and we can validate that with this uh, request body. It's going to return uh, is valid or not. So if it is not valid, if the stuff that you didn't put is valid, we're going to return a status 400, and then we're also going to return the errors of why. Then in our front end, maybe if we do have a front end, uh, it can retrieve these JSON errors, and then we can display the errors because they're just strings after all. But now we don't have a front end at all. But if else, else if it works. Else, if it works, then uh, I'm going to type this down first and explain. Again, when you when you when you send a request to this place, you are you're going to put your stuff in the body, and then one of the tags that you should put into is email. Now, if it doesn't work, it should cut you off. At, if it didn't put an email at all, it should cut you off at this point, right? But if there is, if it works, it's going to come to here, and then user.find one is going to in your MongoDB. Go into your collections. Uh, first of all, go into your collections and find the collection and user, and then finding a user with a property. The, the first user whose email is the is the email that you put in here. Uh, right now, our collection user is not showing up because we still haven't made a single user, so MongoDB has no way to know. But in a second, we will. Um, again, MongoDB stuff is all promise based, so return stuff. So when we call this find one, it returns a uh, an object, and we can name the object user whatever. So we can just say, you know, we can just call it return stuff. I like to name things more exaggerating so that people can actually see what's going on. Um, so if uh. So if we did find something, if we did find something with this email, right, then we're gonna then we're able to send back an object. And so if there, so if we are able to send back an object, then we're gonna say, uh, email already exists. No. Now else, we basically like if 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 this happens, then we then we exit the whole loop. But if it if it works, so if our email does not already exist and it passes the validation checker, it passes the form validation and the check validation, then we can go to saving it to the saving user with request 
information to database. I should actually say that making a new user with a request information and sending to a new database, but I, I, I suppose you guys know what's going on. So here's how we do it. Oh, uh, yeah? Oh, okay. Uh, let's do this. Right, we're gonna we're gonna instantiate these three fields with uh with uh whatever is sending a body, which which definitely should exist at this point. And the dates field is gonna be uh default, right? And we're gonna do a little bit of uh, password hashing here, so don't worry. We're gonna use the package bcrypt that we uh that we imported. This is the only thing I don't know don't know what's going on. I literally I'm copy and pasting the code. Um yeah, so just follow me. Bcrypt dot hash the user dot password. I have no idea what this salt man is. Salty boy. Um if there's an error, throw error the user dot password equals to hash. Uh okay. So at this point we have a hash password and then so we change this field to uh to the one that's hash. And then here's how we save it to the database. We straight up do how we do it. So actually at this point, new user dot save we already saved to the database. The reason they know is where to save it to because it is because we uh, we're saving it to a collection of user. Where we stationed it here as a as a document of user. Uh, so then, after it's saved, we're going to return the object that is just saved, and if there's error, we catch it. That's it for register. Um, now let's set up something. So you might think weird, right? Like it's um, you know, we the router dot post register, but where's like the port five thousand and everything, right? We can't just send to. We can't just send to like local host and then just. Register. I mean the the register part. So where's the. I think the router seems uh premature to you just for now. Um here's how we're gonna make it mature. Um I'm looking this through. Yeah, we're gonna go back to server.js. We're going to say um cost users equals to require dot routes dot API dash users. And this is basically importing this whole file that we made the this is where the endpoints exist. I should call it user endpoints, user server endpoints, but whatever. Um, right, and then here's how we, here's a middleware that's going to cut through. Let me show you guys in a second. Um, where should I put it? I should put it here. The express router is going to use when it, when it sees that the the request coming in starts with API slash users, then we're going to go to uh, then we're going to go to this file, and this file is this file that we made, and then after the slash API slash users, right? It's gonna and then it's gonna see if the uh, the request after the slash API slash users has anything that matches with the endpoints. And right now we only have one endpoint, and that is slash register. So here's how we make a call to test whether it works with uh, Postman. I'm gonna delete this call. Goddamn. So it's going to be a post request because we said it's post here. If you say get, it's not going to work. Uh, the the server is now running. Uh, it's not only running here, but the the prefix is this whole local hosting, right? It's running. It's alive on that serve uh, on that link. Mm, so what I put here. Okay, I said um slash API slash users. So we should go to that. And then here's what I would do. Remember we said rec.body? So we're going to body. We're gonna do this and then we're gonna say uh let me see what do we need. We wanted a I think we wanted a name, I believe. We'll register wanted an email a at gmail.com we wanted a password one two three one two three one two three and we wanted a password 
that's what you so if this works it works okay it's not working and I'm gonna look at why oh wait okay something is not working okay I already know why damn it this is the mistake I made last time um, in this whole users thing when we import it I know we're importing it here up oh, gotta go to server.js we are importing it here but we need, we're not like we can't just export this like whole thing we gotta export something from here so what we're gonna do is uh, export Wait, why is it not oh Uh, the router thing now here is is mature, right? Because we put it in the we gave it an endpoint slash register. So now Express knows to check for a slash register, and we gotta export this router. Um. So yeah, now yeah. Um, now it should work. I suppose. Let's send the request again. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah. So as we can see, um, as we said earlier. When, as we said earlier, if we send a request and it works, we're going to save it and then we're going to return a JSON response, uh, which should be here. Alright, so as you can see, we did see it here. And let's just play around with this. If we do a get request, it's not going to work. Well, I'm surprised it didn't say uh, not found. It should say not found. Okay, yeah, cannot get. Um, post works. Let's see, change it, change up something. Um, if we don't have an email field at all, Email field is required. Yeah, we don't have email field at all. Um, let's say that this is blank. Oh wait, what the? Uh, uh, whatever. Um, so if we register again with the same email, it should say that it doesn't work. Well, yeah, email already exists. And then if we do this one as blank. It should say is required. Yeah, so that works perfectly. Uh, now let's go into the login portion. So if we actually test the login right now, it shouldn't have anything because we haven't created the endpoint yet. So router does not know that we can call a post to login. Um, so if we send anything, it's just say can, cannot post slash register. Yeah, cannot post slash register. I mean login. Sorry. Um, so now let's, now let's make the login endpoint. We made all of our endpoints and users at JS. Where is that? Oh, it's right here. Uh, yeah. I minimized that by pressing this right here. Okay, now let me read the uh, thing real quick. So according to the article, it wants to utilize the passport thing that we uh, npm downloaded earlier. And I actually don't know why will we use it. Let me read this real quick. Let me just follow in and see if I understand. I gotta make a passport.js file and I'm gonna do it. Uh, it says first of all to go to keys and then to turn this into secret or key. We're gonna turn to the secret. Wait, this why is it not working? Okay. Oh. Yeah. Um So I'm going to read off the article straight up. Uh, Passport-JWT does great. Is a is a strategy for authenticating with a uh, JSON web token. So it's adding another layer of security to our passwords and stuff like that. Basically, um, honestly, I don't know what what's, what what is that whole whole uh, what are they doing. But let me just copy it. Like, it's one of th these are one of the things that you sh actually shouldn't read the document. You should not read the document because it's going to be really inefficient for your time. Like, what are you going to do after this? Like, this is just a boilerplate. Right? Like, are you going to really uh, set this up or do whatever with it? Set this up yourself and do whatever with it. Um. Okay.
So I guess when we import the actual passport, we're going to do this. We're going to actually be importing this following thing here. Sorry guys, uh, this part is like literally the copying, copying part. It's one of these really boring parts. Return um, false. Then we can catch an error like this. So when we do uh, do use the passport, we can basically find uh, find the user by the JWT token in our database. Um, it's actually kind of confusing to me too. Do I really care explaining it? No, because it's one of those things that things that you should really just copy and paste. Uh, okay. Now let's make the login endpoint after going through the thread. Um, it's not. It's a little bit laggy for now. Okay, it works now. Uh, let's make an endpoint. Let's call it login. And the most makes the most sense. Right, this is what happens when we do receive a request to log in this code right here is what happens. What happens? Um so yeah, this is akin to the one that we did earlier. So if is valid. Actually, if it is not valid, first of all, then we'll just cut this whole program off and then we're going to return res.status 400 and then uh, .json with the errors that is involved. And then if it is, um, if it works, let's just make a variable. And then we're going to see. We're gonna find the user with the email. With um, we're gonna find one with the email, and the reason we don't have to, like this works too, but um, we can just do this. Like we can find it, find the user with just uh this thing right here. But you know what? Actually, with the most intuitive sense, we're gonna find a user. Okay, actually now we can look at our M lab. So now it's gonna make more sense. Because we did register a user, and now we do have a user in the database. Uh, we actually have two. So if we edit, we can look into it. And then we can, when we do find one email, call an email, I will basically go into all the users we're finding this field, and then see if this whatever matches with this. Okay. And then um, dot then user. So check. If user exists, so if there's no user that exists with that email, we just say email not found.
if it does exist, then we can take whatever comes back. Right? We can take whatever that comes back and match it with whatever we input it into form, right? Which is here in the request of body. So whatever the user input it uh, here, uh, then this match. If this match, then user matched, and we're going to do something. It is called creating the. So when the user matches, we're going to do something called the JWT uh, payload. We're going to create it. Um, it's going to be object with a property called uh, ID and a property called uh, name. Um, let's prettify this. Control Alt F for me. And um, sign a token. So again, this is one of the things that I really just don't know that much about. I will look it up though. I will look it up. Because I, I really just wanted to do this tutorial and then I just started, started digging into it. And now I realize that, oh shoot, I do have some things that I don't know. Uh, this number here means that one year in seconds. Well, that means one year in seconds. Let's do this up here. Um, So this whole thing works, but if it doesn't, um, God, missing a little bit here. Error dot JSON. Errors dot JSON. Blah 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 blah. Um, blah blah. Oh God, I'm a little bit confused. Oh, right here. So if if this is matched, yeah, I, I I forgot that I can just click this and see where the brackets are matching. So if it's not matched, so elf, um, then we just return what like maybe the password is not working. So just we really don't need to do this right here. Well, when we do this, it's basically making a new object and then passing the property. So then we can just refer to this. By uh by retrieving it, calling that. Yes, it's it's just good practice. It's okay. You don't really need that. Um. Yeah. Again, we need to export that. So. You know what? Let's search up what this JWT token really do at the end. But, uh, for now we can go to uh, server and let's see if everything's up correctly again. Uh, oh, yeah, we also need a passport because we just made that. Okay. And then, and then it's going to use these uh, middleware. Okay, something's not working here. That's what uh, H. So extract, extract JWT. Okay, so either this name is wrong or this name is wrong. Let me look it up in our code. Uh, turns out this one is wrong. Okay, now it's working successfully according to our thing. So there's no bugs. Uh, but now let's do the uh, login test. And again, in the login, well, let's actually do this for a second. Um, the email that we made was, let's see, a.gmail.com.
And uh, the only other thing we need is a, a password. I think the password is this. I'm not sure. Though. We can't really see it because it's hashed up. Um, pretty sure it's that's it. But if we set this, we're gonna see it works. And first of all, it might bother you that there's name and password too. So you're like, what the heck is going on? Right? We didn't need these. Um, the thing is, we're only checking. We're, we're extracting the password and email. They're checking them. Uh, you know here. We're extracting them by doing rec.body.email, rec.body.password. We don't really care about what else, what else existing in the rec.body. Um, so yeah, it works and it gives you a token. Uh, you know what, just for fun, let's look up what the token does. What does JSON web token really do? Passport. So I want to see why. What? There, there must be a what in this article, right? There's no what. What? Okay. Let's just read the uh, introduction. Um. Hmm, I actually don't know what is going on here. It's probably not password as matters. But I'm guessing is that when you Yeah, I really don't know what is JSON web token doing there. Um By the way, there's a lot of sync and um, a sync here that we see, and there should be a wait too. But a sync await is basically saying that um, we'll make this an asynchronous call, and it's not, and the next line in the code is not going to happen until that call is completed. So this will be really good in stuff like uh, data fetching. So maybe you don't want to display any of your data until your user is signed in. So you you default make uh, the user sign in first, or else you know. Uh, let me find a better example. So there's just sometimes that one line will trigger, but then the next line is going to trigger before the the line before is going to have the feedback. It happens a lot in data fetching, and we always use a sync and a wait to get around it. Um, but got to be honest, I don't know what's going on with um with the JWT token. I will write in the YouTube uh part though. So uh, yeah, so have a nice day.